The Monument Men will be on the hunt for the first time in 2024 this Saturday in Milano San Remo. After soaking up all the action in Amlupet Newsblot, Strada Bianche, Perry Nice, and Triano Adriatico, it's become pretty clear who's eyeing that eternal spot of glory on the Via Roma. And yeah, I've got some hot takes ready for you. If you're not calling Matthew Vanderpool and Tade Pogacar the stars of the show, you might want to have your pulse checked. But before we get into those two and all the other favorites, I want to break down the course and yes, the weather forecast for this Saturday. The city of Milan and race organizer RCS Sport have not gotten along well in recent years. We've seen that in the Giro d'Italia and last year, well, it became evident in Milano San Remo. The country's iconic race did not kick off from Milan, but instead in 2023 from Abiate Grasso. This year again, no Milan. The race embarks from Pavia, situated south about 36 kilometers from the fashion capital of Milan. Interestingly, in 2023, the peloton rolled through Pavia around the 30 kilometer mark. Yet this shift doesn't shorten the race substantially. The course spans 288 kilometers, only a slight trim from last year's 294 kilometers. It does, however, make me hope and wonder if we'll ever get back to Milan for the start of this great race. The overall course remains largely unchanged, adhering to the traditional blueprint. Riders climb the Paso del Torquino, leaving behind the Po Valley and head towards the coastline. This is where the race's stress level radically shifts upward, leaving the flats for true insanity ahead. Driving your car on Italian roads is challenging enough, let alone racing a bike in a group of 100 plus through the small villages around the road of furniture, all while on tight, twisty roads. The seaside Via Relia SS1 takes the riders west, leading to the Tre Capi, three climbs in quick succession. The Capo Melle, Capo Cervo, and Capo Berta. These are around 50 to 40 kilometers to race. And now you should really be locked into your TV or your computer screen and be watching the race closely because it's going to reach another level. Speeding along the Mediterranean off to the left and up ahead, the Chapressa and Pojo climbs. The Chapressa climbs over 5.6 kilometers with an average of 4.1% and it presents a strategic point for tax. Given its position with 20 kilometers to go to the finish line and here we'll see many of the sprinters with their hopes dashed. The Pojo climb, it comes quickly afterwards, much like the Paderberg follows up the old Quermont and the Tour of Flanders. The Pojo di San Remo climb, a 3.7 kilometer ascent with a 3.0% average gradient, peaks at 8% just before the summit. And it's that straight, entering the town of Pojo, the narrow, windy descent afterwards, riders with 250 kilometers already in their legs that provides so much drama in Milano San Remo and indeed in cycling. The descent leaves 2.2 kilometers to the finish line in San Remo. Space for a final act in this play, long straight stretches, a crucial left turn at around about 850 meters before the finish. The final curve onto the Via Roma, the race's grand finale, lies just 750 meters from the end. For Saturday, the weather in Pavia is expected to start off with mostly cloudy temperatures, around 11 degrees Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit in the morning. The likelihood of rain increases throughout the day, making for potentially damp conditions as the race progresses. Along the coast in the afternoon, riders will face winds from the southwest, with speeds ranging from 15 to 35 kilometers an hour, approximately 9 to 25 miles per hour. In San Remo, the afternoon temperatures are expected to be around 12 to 13 degrees Celsius or 54 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit with light rain possible. Although it appears after some harsh race conditions over the last weeks, the weather gods will mostly be kind to the first monument of 2024. The 2024 of Milano San Remo is live and on demand for all of our viewers in Canada and all sorts of coverage and content for everyone else. The race runs between 10.15 a.m. local and a finish of around 5 p.m. or 4.15 a.m. to 11 a.m. 
East Coast time in the United States. Flow Bikes begins its live coverage at 9.35 a.m. on the East Coast. If you're liking all this video content and you want more coverage of San Remo and the classics and grand tours ahead, make sure to subscribe down below. Okay, I told you we would talk about Tade Pogacar and Matthew Vanderpool, the two outright favorites of Milano San Remo, and get ready for the debut on the road of Matthew Vanderpool. The 2024 winner and defending Milano San Remo champion is back. After a bit of a hush following his World Cyclocross Championship victory, Vanderpool has been like a ninja, sneaking in some serious prep under the Spanish sun. Rumor has it, his training sessions have been nothing short of epic. He's gearing up for what looks like a spring campaign to remember with every pedal stroke echoing, I'm here to conquer. And the Dutchman's crew at Team Alpecin de Kunik, they've been buzzing with energy. Jasper Philipsen is practically dreaming of a sprint finish on the Via Roma, while their Aussie mate, Caden Groves, is benched with a knee issue. And has everyone recovered from the Tade Pogacar Strade Bianche party? Our Slovenian friend, two weeks ago in his last race, his debut of 2024, destroyed the competition with an 81 kilometer solo attack, leaving his rival Tom Pitcock there in the Piazza of Siena to say WTF. This Milano San Remo, along with Liege Beston Liege, Pogacar truly wants to add to his resume alongside winning other monuments, the Tour of Flanders and Il Lombardia. And UAE Team Emirates is pretty much putting all their eggs in the Pogacar basket. And why wouldn't they? The guy is a powerhouse. But hey, don't sleep on Diego Elisi and Mark Hershey. They're poised to shake things up early on on the climbs. And Pogacar, he might just pull a magic trick on the Chapresa. After Strade Bianche, we know better than to rule anything out. Pogacar only has one problem. Matthew Vanderpool, the man who won in spectacular fashion last year. He burned his competitors to ashes, Pogacar included, just before the top of the Pojo. He started the tricky Pojo descent with a small lead, but was no longer caught and soloed to a beautiful victory. Make no mistake, the legends will come out to play on the Pojo. Vanderpool and Pogacar will be the ones to watch, making their moves when it counts. And let's not forget our British friend, Tom Pitcock, swinging into the mix before darting off to the Ardennes Classics. Who else does Team Ineos Grenadiers have? Filippo Ghana and Mikel Kiewikowski. They've had their moments, but it seems that they've hit a bit of a rough patch lately. My number four favorite, who you should be watching out for in Milano San Remo, Mads Pedersen. The Dane has been on fire, winning early in 2024 and often. He finished second on two occasions in Paris, but otherwise worked his tail off in the classification for his teammate, Matthias Skilmos. Is there more to his two sixth place finishes in 2022 and 2023? I don't know. If we're talking straight up sprints, then Lidl Trek has it covered with Jonathan Milan, but I don't think it'll come to that. The 23-year-old giant won two stages in Treno Adriatico, but he did not finish in the top 100 in his previous tries in Milano San Remo. And they also have Jasper Steuven, remember former winner. I expect he'll be helping his Lidl Trek teammates. Mate Morhich, Team Bahrain Victorious, also shines on the honors list. After his fifth place in Strade Bianche, he stayed away from the traditional stage races over the last week, Triano and Perry Nice. The Slovenian has been doing this for years, and in 2022, that approach brought him glory. Once again, he has ended up somewhat forgotten, but remains extremely dangerous for Milano San Remo. Team Jaco Alula's Michael Matthews and Caleb Ewan have not given up hope on winning Milano San Remo. However, Matthews left Perry Nice on day four with stomach issues. Ewan, invisible in the sprints, had similar problems in Triano Adriatico. Maybe after a great ride in Perry Nice, Luke Plapp could discover what else he has to offer as he debuts in the classic. Visma Lisa Bike, after cleaning house in Triano Adriatico and Perry Nice, is without a star option in Milano San Remo. Walt Van Aert, the 2020 winner, is still training at altitude, aiming instead ahead for the Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix. Christophe Laporte will lead the team 
in an attacking small group finish. Remember, he placed fifth in Omlupet Newsblot and fourth in Kuhn Brussels Kuhn. He's going well. If things get stuck together for a sprint, look out for Olaf Koy, his teammate, in his debut ride. Let's be honest, Sudol Quick Step's options are limited. After Julian Alaphilippe, winner in 2009, he suffered in a crash in Omloop and again in Strada Bianche. In the first days of Triano Adriatico, we saw him still feeling the effects. In the stage four kicker, he could only manage ninth. Tim Merlier, the team sprinter, well, he won't be tempted to race in Milano San Remo and instead focuses ahead. After the last sprint stage in Triano Adriatico, the team simply said, Tim didn't have his best day. Team Uno X, the team in yellow and red, they lost Magnus Court due to a broken thumb and will lean more on Alexander Kristoff, winner 10 years ago back in 2014. Arnold Delee, he won't race. Lotto Destiny is therefore banking on Maxime Van Gils. We'd hope for more from Biniam Garmet, Team Intermarche in Triano Adriatico, but he did not give us reasons to elevate him up the list of favorites. I'm keeping an eye out on US rider Nilsson Paulus, Team EF Education Easy Post. He's there racing alongside other riders in pink, including Michael Valgren and Alberto Betiel. And our Canadian friend, Hugo Hul, Team Israel Premier Tech with teammate Christ Nielens. So who's ready for an adrenaline-packed ride to the Via Roma? This Milano San Remo is shaping up to be a clash of the titans with Matthew Vanderpool and Tade Pogacar leading the charge. Get your snacks ready, folks, because if there's one race you don't want to miss, it's Milano San Remo.